Neuroscientist Mark Lewis spends a lot of his time thinking about addiction. He's got good reason to. In his 20s, he struggled with his own addiction to opiates. He eventually managed to leave that behind him, but the experience has sparked a lifelong interest in the area and its links with neuroscience. Now a professor of developmental psychology at Radboud University in the Netherlands, Mark Lewis has written a new book. It's called The Biology of Desire, Why Addiction is Not a Disease. In it, he argues the prevailing disease model, the sees addiction as a brain disease that renders addicts helpless to deal with it is seriously flawed. Mark Lewis joins us from California. Mark, welcome to RM Breakfast. Hi there, thank you. Mark, why why is addiction not a disease? Because that's certainly what the, the, the medicos have been telling us now for a long time and they reckon they've got the research about the brain to back it up. Right. Um, yeah, it is definitely a prevalent model right now, it's a dominant model. And it's, ma- it's mainly based on the findings that there are brain changes that correspond with addiction. Things change, um, and those brain changes can last past the time when people get off drugs or other uh, addictive activities. The thing is, though, that you know, the brain is changing all the time, and it changes more, um, more thoroughly when there's more intensive learning experiences. So if you see addiction as a as a, an intense, an experience which is driven by intense, intensely emotional learning experiences that are repeated over time. Those brain changes are no longer surprising. And in fact, they correspond with brain changes that occur when people fall in love and, and when other, other, go through other major life changes. So there's no reason to call it a disease. It's not very helpful. And it doesn't really add anything to the explanation. So it's, it's not a disease because it, you're not arguing with the medical science that says the brain changes, but you're just saying that that's not unique and doesn't, doesn't equal disease. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. I mean, we, these days, neuroplasticity is, is really an important area of research, and we, we see that the brain is, is massively changeable. It's always changing. It changes in response to uh, physical problems, trauma, stroke, and so on and so forth, but it also changes with psychotherapy. It changes if you learn to you know, drive a taxi cab in, in London. There's evidence that uh, driving a cab in London makes your hippocampus about 20% uh, more massive than mm. that of other people because you have to remember the names of all those streets. You, you, you write in your book, you say, as you waded through a sea of papers on the neuroscience of addiction, you learned how circuits devoted to goal-seeking become captivated by the appeal of a single goal, a drug, a drink, yeah. gambling, porn, whatever it is, um, while simultaneously increasing its own appeal. And this is where you link to what you just said there. It's the same circuits that might be occupied and, and sort of you know manically working if you're in love, for instance, and obsessively, obsessively in love. So as you mm-hmm. discuss that with the, uh, with the, the medical world, world and show that mm. those circuits are doing the same thing, therefore it doesn't mm. equal addiction. What do they say to that interpretation of the data? Yeah, it doesn't equal disease, yeah. It doesn't equal um, disease, sorry. Yeah. Um, I mean, no one is saying that addiction is not serious, that it isn't destructive, and clearly it disrupts people's lives and it can often really wreck lives. Um, but the medicalization, the diseasing of addiction leads to, first of all, I mean, it's, I mean, psych- psychiatry kind of works in a, in a colonial way. It takes over territory and it says, well, okay, addiction is a disease and therefore the way to treat it is by having medically based rehabs. Um, and of course the development of certain drugs is really important and addicts need to follow a, a medical regimen and do, you know, do what they're told basically. And the learning model of addiction is different. It says, no, actually, addicts need to have um, a more powerful sense of, of their, own, uh, uh, their own perspective. They need to develop effort and willpower and self-control. They need to be helped to hold on to different goals and to um, maintain their commitment to those goals. It's entirely different from a medical approach to the problem. It is, but, so when, you, but when you say, as you said earlier, that to treat it like a disease, to treat addiction like disease is not very helpful, I mean, yeah. as, you, as you also say in, in your book, we've started to separate our ideas about addiction from assumptions about moral failings and are less likely to dismiss addicts as simply indulgent, lacking in willpower. I mean, it is yeah. helpful to separate it from that, isn't it? Well, it's, it's helpful. Uh, the stigma of addiction is not particularly useful 
Um, shame is a pretty uh, intense negative emotion, and it probably makes people feel like doing more of the addic- addictive activities rather than less. So I'm not saying that we need to sit back and be accusatory and blameful and mor- moralistic about addiction, not, mm. not at all. Mm. But I don't think you need to call it a disease in order not to denigrate people who have fallen prey to it. It's clearly a serious cyclical habit. It's a learning phenomenon that has, that's difficult to break out of. Clearly, addicts don't like being addicts. It's not much fun, and they need help. But I don't see why that means we have to ridicule them or or stigmatize them just because they don't call it a disease. You've done an enormous amount of research for this because, as you've written about your own experience with addiction in in, in your memoir of an addicted brain, um, you've you've begun a blog on addiction. Many, many hundreds and hundreds of addicts and and former addicts have contacted you. Right. Have what has that led you to conclude in terms of what is, if, if you don't want to, if we shouldn't class it as a disease or it's not a disease, as you say, and that's not the best way to deal with it, put it in that medical model, what is the best way? Yeah, so my, my connection with, with, uh, with, with people who are struggling with addictions or who have struggled with addictions makes me more and more aware of how uh, ineffective the medical model has been And the notion of having a disease, the notion of being a patient with an illness, even a chronic illness Mm -hmm. as it's defined, doesn't make people feel much better. In fact, it often makes them feel worse. And there's some evidence that the the believing that addiction is a disease is itself a a predictor of relapse. So so it, um, it engenders a feeling of helplessness and powerlessness that is in itself, um, uh, works against the process of recovery. So now, so what is it? Well, you know, I, I think it's a learning phenomenon. I think it's a learned habit of mind, a learned habit of thought and emotion and activity. And it's the main thing about it, the thing, the reason why it's so insidious is because it, it's based on a recurrent um, set of activities. You do mm-hmm. it again and again and again. Whether it's drugs, booze, gambling, sex addiction, or porn addiction, the, the, the high, so to speak, doesn't last very long. And so there's a recurrent phenomenon. And it's that cycle that continues to grow and modify and entrench neural pathways that hold the pattern in place. And the more you hold it in place, the more you do it. The more you do it, the more you reinforce the that configuration of neural pathways. And so that, it's a, it's a funnel, it's a self-enclosing tube that becomes really difficult to break out of. I think that's what it is, and I think that the neuroscience and our practical uh, um, understanding of addicts' plights converge on that sort of understanding of what addiction really is. It's 24 past eight. Our guest is Mark Lewis. He's a neuroscientist. His new book is called The Biology of Desire, Why Addiction is Not a Disease. So, so where does this take us, Mark? If that's the neuroscience, as you've explained it, and, uh, and we need to try and break that habit, I guess, is the action. Does that mean mm-hmm. if we're taking it outside of the disease model, we're, we're removing the, the, the value of medication, for instance, to help with addiction? No, not entirely. Uh, in the book, I, um, I tell the stories of five addicts who I've interviewed in great depth, and I get into their biographies, and each one of them has gotten into addiction and gotten really trapped by it and then gotten out again. And most addicts do actually recover. Mm. Um, and, and so the addicts that I talk about in the book, they've recovered in various ways, but for some of them, especially those who are addicted to physically addictive substances like opiates, like heroin, they often need medication in order to go through a withdrawal period or even a maintenance period as they're getting them themselves together. So, so medication is important, but it's important as an adjunct to treatment. It shouldn't be, it's not the main, it's not, it's, it's not the center stage of treatment. It's something that some people need and other people don't. So treatment, just very briefly, the treatment, if you're taking it outside the sort of hospital disease model, treatment then rests with psychology, psychotherapy, that kind of treatment. Yeah, psychology, psychotherapy, group support, um, mindfulness, meditation, motivational interviewing. There's a whole bunch of psychological and related techniques and humanistic techniques and interpersonal techniques that can be very, very helpful. And the fact is, you know, medication has not been very successful. I mean, you've got, you've got opiate substitution therapy, opiate substitution drugs like Suboxone, buprenorphine, which is like what methadone used to, what was prescribed for a little bit uh, in the older days, still is. 
Um, and they're not very helpful. They can get you from one addiction into another, but they don't actually deal with the source of the problem. Okay. Mark Lewis, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Mark Lewis is a neuroscientist, and his new book is called The Biology of Desire, Why Addiction is Not a Disease. It's released by Scribe today, and he'll be touring Australia in August, appearing at the Festival of Dangerous Ideas at the Sydney Opera House.